Damien uh, uh, Harnshard, uh, he got a question. Um, so he said, would you recommend allocating a 457B to Ian's formula of two tech and two index funds, or should I leave it in my target retirement age? To my retar- target retirement age, I'm 42 and I'll be able to retire at 55. Oh. I think it's a great re- question for Rashad to, to answer, being an advisor. I mean, I think regardless of what you're in, like, I thought you kind of like splitting hairs, but like Rashad, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, the target date funds are a good way to go um, because it automatically changes as you get closer to retirement. So like mm-hmm. if it's like 2050, 2055, 2060, it's automatically going to be aggressive when you're young and then it gets more conservative as you're closer to that target date. So at least you want to have some exposure in that, maybe not the whole entire thing. Um, 50-50 is always a good choice as well. Like if you really feel comfortable about um, a fund, um, then you might be able to put, okay, 25% in small cap, 25% in large cap, and then 50% in the target date fund. Um, For the the, uh, 457 plan, he probably can't do individual stocks. Mm -mm. Most 457 plans, they're not going to allow you to invest in like Apple or Tesla. You have to invest in the actual fund um, that's provided for you by the by the provider of the plan. So like Fidelity, let's say Fidelity is the the holder of the um the retirement plan. Fidelity will give you a menu of investments. They'll have like 20 different investments that you get to pick and choose from. Um, but you can't really go outside of that um, unless it's a self-directed 401k plan. But I haven't really seen any self-directed 457 plan. So I'm assuming that that's not the case. So yeah, um, it sounds like you're on the straight, the, the right path with the uh, self-directed. If you want to, you know, add a little bit to it, then maybe, you know, diversify a little bit to it. 25% in one fund, 25% in another fund, but you don't want to, you don't want to spread it out too thin either because a lot of those, most, all of those funds have hundreds of stocks in them. So, you know, you get like 10 different funds and then you have like a thousand different stocks. So yeah, you something that. that, something to take into consideration. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's go to. Ooh, name. You better come on here, ask for these prices. I'm feeling generous. I got. I, there's a question here. They couldn't make it here tonight. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna get to some stock entry points for you, Ian, in a sec. Uh, Yakobi. I hope I said that right. Yakobi Johnson. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on? Peace, bro. Appreciate what y'all do for culture. Uh, I have you. two I questions. You. I have one for Rashad and one for Ian. Rashad, I have been practicing finances for about three years. Is it worth me getting my Series 63 and seven. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you want to be a financial advisor and invest people's money um, in individual stocks, uh, more sophisticated investments than a Series 7 will definitely help. If you want to just stick with, you know, annuities, mutual funds, um, then you need a Series 6. But if you're going to get a Series 6, you might as well get a Series 7, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, because my firm wants to push mutual funds, and I'm not really a big fan. Yeah, so like I, you know, everybody everybody's practice is different. There's some people that only do insurance, and they don't need a, a securities license at all. Um, so it's up it's up to you. I really don't want to give you like a, a blanket answer on that, but it really just depends on where you want to take your career. If if that's the main focus of yours is to um become a, an asset manager and to get a lot of money of you know assets under management. Um, and that's really your goal to kind of build that book of business, then yeah, you want to, you want to, you want to go ahead and do that because it's going to help you in the long run. Well, you can't even invest people's money if you don't have a six or a seven or a seven. So, um, is, but if you have the seven, it's definitely going to help you a little bit more in the long run than if you have a six. All right. Awesome. Appreciate that. And, uh, Ian, um, yes. you may give this answer where you may not when looking to join stock club, what type of capital should I look for as far as startup? Cause I've been investing long term, and now I'm getting into options, and I'm like, well, let's let's try to make some money. Cause I'm getting old and ain't getting young, if that makes sense. Well, you know, I don't cover options in stock club. Okay. Um, but anywhere from five grand to twenty five grand is a good amount. Like I've had people start with a thousand, but last year was different, so I won't say this year would be repeatable. But I've had people start with a thousand, and uh, actually, some guys I ran into in, in New York. They actually pulled over on me, which is crazy. Thought I was in danger for a second. <laughs> um, I was like, "Yo!" I was like, "Hold up, brother! No, no, I'm not here to help you." Not him. But so they started with two grand and went up to nineteen thousand in a year. Um, but yeah, five thousand to twenty. But especially with your experience, 
you'll be able to do incredibly well. You'll do incredibly well. Okay. I appreciate you going. Yeah, best of, best of luck. Y'all. Best of luck with everything, bro. I remember when you were studying for that. That was crazy. Like, yeah. You know, he was. If it, you can I, do it over again, with you your know, advisor? That? Um, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot when um during that journey, and it really helped me. Um, and I think everything is part of the process. So, you know, Absolutely. yeah, I definitely would. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it definitely prepared me a lot. Um, even though I'm still learning something every every single day, but it gave me a great insight working with clients for over a decade. That was no joke. I remember it was like 10 hour study days for you. I'm like, yo, we going outside. Yeah, I got this test I gotta yeah, take. <laughs> my, 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 my finances are relying on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Dominique, we coming to you. Unmute yourself, you've been unmuted. What's going on? Oh, no. Yeah, Do they have a fridge emoji? No fridge emoji. <laughs> that is a fact. Nah, ain't no fridge breaks. All right, we're gonna go to Dara. Dara, we're coming to you. Unmute yourself. You've been unmuted. What's going on, Dara? Hey, how's it going, you guys? Hey, how are you? Doing good, doing good. Um uh, I just want to give you guys your flowers first. So I uh, thank you so much. Uh Rashad, Troy, Ian. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate Red it. Panda, amazing. I love Red Panda Stock Club. I love that. Appreciate you. <laughs> but I do have a question for you, Ian. Um, a few of my peers, they're they're in the, you know, they're into the forex trading. So, in your sp- perspective, uh, all three of you guys, what do you guys, what what's better, option stocks, forex, futures, <laughs> okay. forex futures. traders? <laughs> I've learned to be diplomatic. Yeah. Every asset has a place within the world balanced portfolio. That's my PR answer, right? Um, there are some people that can really kill it in Forex, but my thing is like, if you can hit 150 pips in Forex, why not hit 150 ticks in futures and make on a bond market 31 X or in ES 12 times the amount. So like my formula is like two tech, two index swing trade futures. Cause it pays more. And then also, if you could do 12 to 24 trades per year, like if Forex paid more, I would go to Forex. Like, I don't care when people like, you know, because when episode 70 came out, the Forex people was killing me, right? Um, I don't care. But also, too, like if you need practice or your capital is low, the Forex market is a decent market to start with to get practice. But practice on a futures market if you're going to trade because you'll get paid a hell of a lot more. Because I know of some people that have hit four or 500 pips, 1,500 pips in a day. And then when you ask what have they made, it's not a lot. So yeah, I, think I go based off what pays the most. Like, would you rather play in the D League or the NBA? I'd rather be Devin Booker. Arguably, there are some players in the D League who are better than some players in the NBA. The paycheck look way, way different, though. That's true. So, I, my, my journey, uh, and maybe I can speak for you too, uh, Shadi. Uh, we started in the stock market, understood that, figured out how to use the stock market to our advantage, mm-hmm. learned options, studied that. And now my, my next venture, and I hope my brother's gonna hold my hand through this, is, is Futures. Um, yes. And he has been telling me I gotta get into Futures. God, I would kill you. it, I would kill it. Jamal kill it. too, my God, come on. <laughs> he over here shaking his head. My yeah, God. So that, that'll be the next thing. But yeah, I, I didn't wanna do all those at once, right? Because I wanna- you Gotta master one firm, at a time. Yeah, master yep. one, get a firm understanding, and then move on to the next thing. And so uh, Futures will be next. Never, never done Forex, you done Forex? Can I ask you guys a question? You guys have interviewed way more celebrities than me. Have you met one rich person that is has a net worth over $10 million? Have they ever mentioned Forex to you? Yeah, you got a point on that one. Uh, nah, nah, not, not today. It's rare. Not today. Yeah. I'm sticking with futures and stock markets. Thank I'm you just guys. going with where the money is. Like, if I can trade goats like I was Akeem and Zamunda and make a hundred thousand per go. I would do that. I would be the greatest goat herder next to Akeem and Zamunda. I'm just traveling to where the money is. One up on Wall Street by Peter uh, Lynch is a great book as well. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>